When developing themes or plugins for a WordPress multi-site network, there are a few things to consider that are slightly different from developing for a single-site WordPress install. In this lesson, you'll discover some differences to consider and how to ensure that your plugins and themes are supported for multi-site. Generally, themes and child themes work exactly the same on a multi-site network as they do on a single site. Once a theme or child theme is network activated, it can be activated on any single site on the network. All specific functionality that you may want to code in a functions.php file will work in the scope of the current theme. For example, if you wanted to display the site name in the footer of a theme, you could use the standard getBlockInfo function to retrieve the site name. So inside of our child themes functions.php, we can say get site name. and then just return the name from the blog info. Then anywhere where we want to get that name, for example, in the footer pattern, we can simply use that function call and the site name will appear in the footer. If we test this on our sites, at the bottom of the BobPress site, we can see proudly powered by BobPress. And at the bottom of the MultiPress main site, we can see proudly powered by MultiPress. However, let's say you wanted to include the main site name in the footer of the theme regardless of which site was currently being viewed. You could use the switch to blog function to switch to the main site, retrieve that site name, and then restore the current sites to get the current site name. So if we go back to our function, we can say current site name is going to be get blog info name. And then we could switch to blog. And because we want to work with the main site, that'll be ID one, if we know that ID. And then we can get the main site name using the same get blog invo call because we're now in the scope of the main site. And then use restore current blog to restore back to the main site. And then we can do something like return site name and because that's part of the main site name network. And now that should appear in the footer of both sites. So let's test that. Let's check out the MultiPress site. Proudly powered by MultiPress, part of the MultiPress network. And BobPress, proudly powered by BobPress, part of the multi-site network. Taking this one step further, perhaps you want to exclude the main site only from this custom functionality. You could use the isMainSite function to check whether the current site is the main site, and if so, just return that site name. Back in our function, right at the top of the function, we could say if is main site, then just return get block info name. Otherwise, if it's any other site on the network, build the custom name. And so if we test that on the MultiPress site, the main site, just says proudly powered by MultiPress. But on the BobPress site, it includes the custom functionality.
and all of this is possible just within one functions.php file inside of our child theme. Most plugin functionality will work the same in a single site as well as a multi-site. Functions like register post type or get posts will function in the same way, just in the scope of the specific site in question. There are however two things to consider when developing plugins for a multi-site. Plugins will often have a settings page, which is usually accessible from the admin dashboard. This is fine for single site plugins, but on a multi-site network, you need to consider where the settings page should be located. Should it be in the network admin dashboard or on the individual site dashboard? If you need to have a settings page on the network admin dashboard, you can use the network admin menu hook to add a menu to the network admin dashboard. If you need to have a settings page on the individual site dashboard, you can use the admin menu hook to add a menu item to the individual site dashboard. Plugins might also have to add custom tables to store custom data. If you're using something like the WPDB prefix variable to prefix your table names, you'll end up with a table name that is prefixed with a site ID. So if you need to have a custom table for this functionality on a per site basis, you need to plan for it. Let's look at an example. Here we have the plugin from the Introduction to Securely Developing Plugins tutorial. It has a form submissions table being created when the plugin is activated, which is used to store the form submissions. If you look at the code, you'll see that the table name is prefixed with the prefix property from the global WPDB object. In a single site install, this means that it will create one table using the prefix that is defined in the wp-config file. In this example, that will be wp underscore form underscore submissions. However, on a multi-site network, depending on how the plugin is installed, it will create different tables. If the plugin is activated on a single site on the network, the table prefix will include the site ID. So, for site ID 2, the table name will be WP2 form submissions. However, if the plugin is network activated, the activation process is running in the scope of the main site, and it creates the same table as if it's activated on a single site install. So, for a network activation, the table name is WP form submissions. The problem comes in when you look at the code that stores the form submissions. Because this uses the same prefix property from the global WPDB object, when this code is run in the scope of the main site, it will look for the WP form submissions table to store the data. But, for example, when it's run in the scope of site 2 on the network, it will look for WP2 form submissions in the database to store the data, which does not exist. To fix this, we need to update the plugin activation routine to take this into account. To start with, it's a good idea to move the table creation routine into a separate function and then call this function from the activation hook. We'll take all of this code and create a new function which just creates the table. In the notes in the doc for the register activation hook, you'll notice that the callback function accepts a network-wide parameter. This is a Boolean value that is passed to the activation hook callback and indicates whether the plugin has been activated network-wide or not. You can then update the callback to first check if the site is a multi-site network and if the plugin is being activated network-wide. So we'll pass in the network-wide parameter to receive either true or false. And then we'll check if is multi-site, in other words, this is a multi-site network, and whether this is being activated network-wide or not. If these two checks are true, fetch and loop through all the sites on the network, switch to each site in turn, and create the table for each site. So we can use the getSites function that we used earlier to get all the sites on the network. Set up a for each loop to loop through 
the array of sites returned and fetch each individual site as an object. Then use the switch to blog function to switch to the site in question. And the property on the site object is blog ID to get the ID. Then we can run WP learn create table to create the table in the context of the specific site in question. And then use the restore current blog function to restore back to the last blog. Alternatively, if the plugin is not being activated network wide or not on a multi site network, you can just create the table for the current single site. So here we will do an else and just call the create table function. Place this out by activating this plugin on the network. You should see all the right tables being created. So let's acti network activate this plugin. And then if we refresh the database, there is WP2 form submissions and there is the regular WP form submissions. But what happens when a new site is created? In this case, you'll need to use a hook like WP initialize site to create the table for any new sites on the network. So let's set up that functionality. We'll say add action, pass in the WP initialize site hook, and then register our new site function. Create the callback function. It receives a site object. And then we can use the switch to blog, create table and restore current blog. Only difference being that the site ID is inside of the site object in this case as site ID. And the reason we need to do this is the user is probably registering the new site from the main site. So we need to make sure we switch to the new site ID that's just been created, create the table and restore the block. Test that out by creating a new site. It should create the new table for that site's form submissions in the database. So to do this, we need to make sure that we have allowed sites and user accounts to be registered. Save those changes. And then if we log out and register on the network, and then say, give me a site. We now have a new site created. And once the site has been activated, if we check the database, the table has been created for the new site. By making these changes, you allow your plugin to work on a multi-site network, both when it's activated for the first time on the network, taking into account any existing sites, but also future proofing for any new sites. Besides the documentation on creating a network and things to consider before creating a network, there's not a lot of developer-focused documentation specific to developing for multi-site. However, it is possible to view a list of all multi-site related functionality by browsing to the multi-site package section of the WordPress developer code reference.